hi guys welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is angel and i'm back with another video i know you guys saw the title so you already know what's up yes as promised i am back with my surgery video to give you guys all the details in regards to my surgery and the fibroids that i suffered with if you have not checked out my last video in regards to the q a that i did about the fibroids as well as my fibroid journey definitely um, hit the link or the card here above or wait until the end of the video and then go check out that video okay okay so let's go ahead and get right into it now at the time that I'm recording this, I am about four weeks post-op. I did have an abdominal myomectomy. Now after discussing my options with my surgeon, we decided that an abdominal myomectomy was the best route for me. One, because I wanted to preserve my fertility. Also because of the recovery time, I didn't want to be down too long out of work. So um, the abdominal myomectomy allows me to be out of work maybe about four to six weeks or so depending on my recovery. So there was another factor. I was able to get my fibers removed with a four inch incision, which is like a bikini cut down or like a C-section incision. So I was grateful for that. I did not want to have that big incision going down the middle of my stomach, no. Now at the time I had my MRI done, they told me I had about five fibroids, but when I had the surgery done, they removed nine out of my uterus. One of them was really large as it was stated on the report. It ended up being about 15 or so centimeters. So yeah, it was crazy. So when I discussed the results with my gynecologist, due to the size of them and the placement, she did refer me out to a fibroid specialist. Um, so both of them actually did my surgery, but the fibroid specialist was the primary surgeon. So I had to have a pre-op appointment with both of them to discuss the surgery, what to expect, and the route that they were going to use to remove the fibroid. Of course, we discussed the MRI report and then we discussed the best option, which we landed on being the abdominal myomectomy. Now, the day before the surgery, I did have to do a bowel prep, so I was not able to eat <laughs> for t those 24 hours before the surgery. All I could have was like broth, um, jello, clear liquids. I was hungry. <laughs> But I understood the reason why I had to do the bowel prep. So just be aware of that if you're getting ready to have your surgery done. They may require you to have a bowel prep. So I, I ended up not being able to eat anything for about two days. So the day before I had the surgery and the day of the surgery, I still could not eat anything. Um, I was not able to start to eat food until the day after. So... Now, I also had to have a pre-op appointment with the hospital, and that just included doing blood work, checking my vitals, making sure I was fit for the surgery, um, different things like that. I also had to have a pre-op with my primary care doctor as well. Um, he had to do an EKG to make sure my heart and everything was functional to go under the general anesthesia. So I had to do that, and then they did blood work as well. Y'all, I was picked and prodded on so much before the surgery but i did not complain because i needed to have it done okay now the day of the surgery i had to be at the hospital at five o'clock that morning my surgery was set to start at 7 30 that morning so i got up early i couldn't really sleep the night before just being anxious about everything um, so we got there on time um of course we had to go through registration and everything although i did pre-register but we went through registration um they did another pre-op before then I just did a pregnancy test and everything to make sure I was good to go so after the surgery I was in recovery I woke up in the recovery room definitely kind of out of it um, I just remember seeing a nurse like sitting over like the way on her phone just kind of watching me and then when she saw me wake up and everything she called someone basically to let them know that I was awake um, I was still kind of in and out of sleep as they took me down to the room that I would be spending the night in. I was in and out of sleep, so I remember nurses kept coming in, asking me questions, and I was kind of out of it, honestly. Now, I do remember waking up with this, like, bag, right? It's like a little fanny pack is what I could describe it as. And so I'm like, okay, what is this? You know, I woke up, I had a little binder on, and this little bag. Um, actually, inside that bag was my pain pump which they call an uncue pump. I'm gonna insert a picture of that as well. 
I remember my throat being so scratchy and dry. I was like asking if can I have some ice chips. I was coughing and the cough hurt so bad. Just thinking you've been, you've just had your stomach cut open and you having to cough and bear down. Oh, it was, it was the worst. It was the worst. Um, and the reason I was having a cough is because they put the tube down my throat when I was under, which I did not know they were going to do that. But there was a reason I was having all the coughing and it was, it progressed for maybe about a week after the surgery. It was horrible. Horrible. When I woke up, I also had a catheter, which they did let me know ahead of time I would have a Foley catheter in place. Um, now, I ended up having to stay in the hospital for a full 24 hours. So from the time I was actually admitted into the room I spent the night in, I was probably in there a full 24 hours. So the next day I went home, which I was grateful for. Now, they did give me restrictions or requirements before I was able to go home. So the morning after surgery, um, they woke me up around four or five that morning and made me walk around the floor in the hospital, which I was grateful for because I was having a lot of gas pains. <sighs> that was the worst too. Like I feel like that hurt more than anything. It was like stabbing pain in your abdomen. And so walking helped being, you know, helped me be able to pass the gas, TMI, but that's what you're here for. Um, so that definitely helped a lot. So I had to be able to walk around, pass gas. Then I had to be able to urinate on my own once they took out the catheter. So check and check. So I was good to go. Um, now the next morning after the surgery, I was able to eat food. So they brought me breakfast. I had like a little piece of sausage. Um, I believe I had some breakfast potatoes, eggs, which were bomb. <laughs> And then oatmeal, which I did not care for, but I was going home anyway. Um, I still was there around lunchtime. So for lunch, I think I had meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and string beans, which wasn't bad at all, being that it was hospital food. I was grateful for the meal. Like I said, I hadn't had anything those two days prior besides like broth, jello, and juice or clear liquid. So I was grateful to have something I could actually chew. Now, once I got home from the surgery, once I was discharged, I did not really have an appetite at all. I would advise you to just kind of put yourself on a schedule, like when it's time to take your pain medication, get up and just kind of walk, do a couple little laps in your living room, which is what I did. And that just kind of helped keep those gas pains at bay because those was that was the worst thing I dealt with was the gas pains, honestly. Um, they also did give me, of course, pain medications to go home, Colace, which is a stool softener to be able to have bowel movements, which were still pretty here and there as I went home and recovered. But yeah, those gas pains, y'all, that was the worst. Okay, that and the coughing because I'm trying to bear down so I don't bust open my incision. Oh, it was... <sighs> Thank God I don't have to deal with that anymore. And as I mentioned, my incision, there was about a four inch incision, which if you saw the size of my fibroid, it was a miracle that they was able to get it through that little incision. But I'm glad that they did. And the aftercare, like uh, once I got home, like I said, I still had that little pump thing, which is the on cue pump. Again, I should have inserted a picture by now so that you'll see what it looks like. And it basically delivers local pain anesthetic or medication to that area so it was like a tube that was inserted into my abdomen so it was directly um, at the lower part of my abdomen near my incision so I had that I want to say maybe about five days um, so it starts off as like a ball and then it deflates as the medication goes out and so they give you the instructions to remove it on your own which I was scared about but I watched a YouTube video and it was actually pretty easy. Um, it did not hurt at all. I did feel a little pressure as I was pulling it out, but that was it. It reminds me of like those magicians, a handkerchief, you just keep pulling it. So with the tube, you just keep pulling it out, keep pulling it out. And the end is just like a little, once you get to the tip, it's like a black little line that lets you know that you're done. And that's it. You just put a bandage over it and you're good to go. I'm sorry I didn't record that. At that point, I was not even... Thinking about documenting everything that I went through, I was just trying to get through it. Now, the only thing with the on cue pump is that, like I said, it was in a bag, like a fanny pack sort of. And you, it's like an IV attached to you, but it's attached to your abdomen. And you basically have to carry that around with you, whether you go into the kitchen, bathroom, wherever you have to carry that with you. So I got a little 
tired of having to carry that thing on my shoulder as I'm trying to make my way around the house. But it was okay. Um, I believe they felt like that was the best course of action or the best way to alleviate the pain that I would be having. So once I did remove that, that's when I, every now and then I would start to take the Percocet to help keep the pain at bay. But like I said, it wasn't that bad. The worst pain again <laughs> was the gas pain, having to cough, and then still to this day, getting in and out the bed bothers me or kind of hurts, you know, but that's really it. Now, I don't know if y'all wanted to see this, but I'm going to insert a picture in the next few seconds of the fibroids that they removed. If you do not want to see that picture, just skip forward about 10 to 20 seconds and then we'll catch back up. But I did want to include a picture for those people that wanted to see it. Um, I'm going to include the picture now. Um, as you see the matter on the left, that big piece of fibroid, they had to keep cutting it off in sections to get it through my incision. Yes, y'all, it was that big. And then those other ones are just smaller fibroids, of course, and then my uterus. So, all right, we're back. So, yeah, I hope it didn't gross you guys out, but I didn't want to include the picture. I know some people didn't want to see it, so there you go. Um, and I actually wanted to see it as well. I was pretty anxious to see what they were going to take out of me. As I mentioned, they did remove about, they removed nine fibroids, and the smallest one was very small. Um, now, as I mentioned, I'm still at this point about four weeks post-op. I'm able to move around pretty good. I um, wasn't able to drive for the first two weeks, so I am driving now. Um, I just limit going in and out the house because there are steps leading to my door, so I don't want to keep going up and down the steps and have my incision open up or have a setback or anything like that. So I'm still taking it easy, but I am able to drive now if I need to go to the post office to drop off orders or anything like that. I am still pretty swollen. I do notice that I am still bloated as well. So I'm anxious to see how we're going to look once everything calms down. I took a before picture <laughs> of my stomach looking like I was six months pregnant. Um, I'm probably not going to do the side-by-side -side in this video, but I will do it in my six-week post-op video um, once I'm cleared with my doctor and give you guys the update on all of that. And it's crazy because I can already see that my stomach did go down. Thank goodness. <sighs> I can tell. It already went down. Um, I did have to cut off my waist beads before surgery, but I did go ahead and put on a new pair actually today. So I put on a new um, set of waist beads to see, you know, how much more my stomach goes down as the waist beads drop. That'll help me gauge, you know, how much more slimmer it's looking. I want to say the hardest thing about the recovery thus far has been getting in and out the bed, putting on shoes, going up and down the stairs. And of course, just like moving around, you still having to take your time. I feel like I kind of waddle a little bit sometimes, but I'm definitely getting better. Of course, like bending or stooping down. That's another thing. Um, I try not to like bend at the waist because I don't want to put too much pressure on my incision. So I'm kind of like doing sumo squats if I need to get anything off the ground, which I'm trying to avoid that as well. I also want to mention too, before I had this surgery done, I was somebody that loved sweets. Like as far as like, <clears throat> don't judge me, okay? But I'm somebody that used to have to have something sweet every day. Like I love the little Debbie honey buns. I will put it in the microwave for a few seconds, make it nice, soft, and hot. And I will eat that pretty much every day. I have not had that at all since before my surgery. And I used to eat them every day. So I would definitely say my cravings um, for certain foods has gone away since having my fibroids removed. And I'm glad <laughs> because those honey buns kept the pounds on. Okay, we're trying to get the pounds off. So there's one thing I can say about having those fibroids removed. I no longer have those sugar cravings. I am grateful for that. Um, again, I have completely changed the way I'm eating. So I plan on carrying that out to change it into a lifestyle. I do feel lighter and I definitely can tell that my stomach has gone down. Again, I just laced myself with a new set of waist beads today. So I'm anxious to see how much they are going to drop by the time my six weeks or even eight weeks, three months out. I'm anxious to see. I cannot wait to start working out. Y'all ain't gonna be able to tell me nothing, okay? I'm ready. 
all right guys so that is it that is everything in regards to the abdominal myomectomy that i had done to remove my fibroids if you have any specific questions that i did not go over in this video please feel free to leave them down below in the comment section also be sure to check out my last video in regards to my fibroid journey as well as the q a that i did about the questions i received about the fibroids if you found this video helpful, definitely be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell so that you do not miss another upload. Thank you guys again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!